it's midnight and I'm gonna need coffee in the morning, but my kids are asleep. So you grind coffee down in the guest room. Okay, good morning. We are 10 minutes away from getting the hack day started. It doesn't officially start until 9 a.m. Uh, West Coast. So because of time zones, I wanted to facilitate the hack day starting early so the East Coast people didn't waste their whole morning just waiting. So I'm up early with my coffee. Now I have no idea what to expect today. I hope we can replicate just even a small piece of the energy and I, I think the fun that we usually have. So my only goal of the hack day this year is to make sure that everybody else has a good hack together day. excited about that. I'm trying to replicate some of the conference coffee catering vibe. I've got half of a donut and a banana for breakfast and a lot of coffee. Okay, we've been hacking for about an hour, hour and a half. About a half dozen of us got up early. We're spanned over many time zones, which is really cool. So it was 6 a.m. here for me, and I think one person, it was 4 p.m. Truly an international effort. Very cool. Our collective hack this morning so far has been playing with GatherTown, which is a platform for online video conferencing and chatting and hanging out. And I think this is going to be a cool platform for the day. We're in a castle, and my friend Daniela, who AstroVlog fans have met before on these AAS vlogs even, uh, she put a dragon in because a good castle needs a dragon. This might be a fun platform for uh, emulating parts of the actual conference experience. Uh, well, I'm not super well prepared for this. <laughs> so I didn't know who I'd find. Uh, so I'm talking with Adam Bergasser, who is a longtime collaborator and friend. What are you doing at the meeting this week? I, I'm not presenting, but my students are presenting. But I'm also running for VP, so I figured it'd be uh, appropriate for me to be present at the meeting if I'm running yeah. for an office. <laughs> you know, I had been a board trustee for a few years, mm. um, and it was actually quite uh, nice to to have some um, role in how the society works and function to address problems as you know as as they do arise. Mm -hmm. um, I think the meetings are one of the most important activities LAS does. To me, it's an opportunity to kind of be involved in that in that process. As I was preparing, you know, getting the block schedule out and sort of highlighting things that I wanted to go to, I, I kept having that sort of very familiar um, sense of lo just low grade loss that you that I think became very characteristic of 2020. You realize like, oh, it's that time of year where I get to do that fun thing. Oh, no, oh, I guess I don't get to do that this year. Yeah, I think we do forget the importance um, of those random social encounters or seeing yeah. people you haven't seen in, in, you know, a year or two years. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's really hard in this virtual environment. What do you think a successful AAS is going to be this year? You know, I think some of the things that we are seeing as successful is the the barrier to entry to these meetings is much lower. We're seeing folks at the meeting that we don't normally attend these meetings. To me, that's already a success, but I think what will measure whether that was a true success, right? So you can have people who are, you know, showing up, but are they actually able to engage, act, um, are they able to make connections uh, yeah. along like science ideas? You know, one of the technologies I see that have been interesting, and this happens a lot in teaching in particular, and, but also in meetings, is that the chat feature has mm -hmm. been amazing. It's kind of the thing you want to do in one of these big talks is like, you know, as the talk's going on, is have a little like side chat with your, you know, your yeah. colleagues. That's something that could be replicated in a live meeting if we have a, you know, some kind of virtual platform that's associated with it. I think we need to be gentle with ourselves and with others, right? This this is an unusual and remarkable time. And, yeah. you know, some of us really are going to have to get through this before we can really get back to that level of, of productivity. Yeah. And that's okay. Thank you so much, Adam. Good luck with your hack. And I hope you have a great meeting and good luck in your election. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, James. All right, it's lunchtime. Time to get up and move. Got myself uh, some fizzy water. I've had a lot of coffee. No surprise. Still have not eaten my banana. I have an office mate now. So far, I've been able to get a couple people on camera. 
chatting about their hack day. And I'm really enjoying this gather town environment. I've got it up over here and it's just, it's just nice to, it has the sense of being physically at the meeting. So I'm gonna go back over here next to the dragon that Daniela left, sit in my big cozy red chairs for my astro vlog and see if anybody wants to chat. I think it's going okay. I don't know if you're still here. I see you sitting in the uh, the chair across from me on the... My name is Linnea Volnevich, and I am a junior um, undergraduate student at the University of Colorado Boulder studying astrophysics. And this is your first hack day, and you just submitted your first paper, which is incredible and... Thank you. Yeah, I'm very excited. It's called The Stars Kepler Mist. And so essentially, it's about the Kepler Space Telescope and looking back at the stars it chose from its um, CCDs using Gaia DR2 to identify stars it didn't choose to observe. And then we essentially looked for when it chose the stars, whether it was biased in any way. I love Kepler and I, it was a huge transformative part of my career. And so the fact that it's still, I mean, now 12 years or whatever after launch, yeah. still producing papers, um, is awesome and just such a testament to how cool the data is so that's great was this a summer project that got turned into a paper or yes yeah i um got an internship or an ru uh last summer with the university of hawaii which unfortunately i was so excited to go live in hawaii but then covid um but it still culminated in a paper so that's good so are you presenting at the meeting what's your what's your AAS plan I am. I'm presenting on Tuesday, like a little five minute talk about the about the paper. And what do you, what, what do you think is next? You said you're a junior. Um, are you thinking about applying to grad schools? Thinking about applying to jobs next? What's next? Yeah, what's next is grad school. I'm hoping to attend in data science, actually, instead oh, cool. of astrophysics. And then hopefully in the future, come back to astrophysics with my data science knowledge. Well, what is your advice? Or... What would you have told yourself on your first WS mm. conference? I would like definitely have told myself to come to the hack day. I think you all you already have like uh, yes. exceeded my ex you know my expectations for my past self. Um, going to the hack day is a great idea. Just it's something different. It's my my biggest advice is like just go go to at least one session where you talk to somebody. Like it's easy to go to the plenaries and just watch big talks and like take notes and mm -hmm. think big thoughts and that's good. But like try to talk to somebody and that's going to be doubly hard this week. It's hard enough when you just have to like walk over to somebody and, and introduce yourself, but like now you have to really go out of your way to like find a Zoom room or something where you can, you know. Yeah, I don't really just want to come out of this and be like, great, I watched things on my computer. Right, right, because that's just every day, right? Like every day we just watch stuff on our computer and yeah, this this right here, what we're doing right now, this is the difference, right? Yeah, and so far that's what I like about this Hack Day workshop. So I went to one yesterday, which was helpful because it taught things like R and such, but, you know, you didn't really get to actually meet people. Thanks for chatting. Yeah, thank you. Wonderful to meet you. I have no idea how editing this is going to go tonight. Like, yeah, it's an experiment, good. folks. It's an experiment. It's a hack day. It's an experiment. Yeah. Sounds great. So uh, thanks for having us, James. My name is Gaurav Kuller. Um, I use he, him, his pronouns. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Chicago, and I've been writing with Astrobytes uh, since January 2016. Hi, I'm Ellis Avalon. I use she, her pronouns, and I am a third year grad student at the University of Hawaii. I've been writing with Astrobytes for, er, since 2018. Okay, so you're both like Astrobytes pros at this point. You've both been with the pro project for a long time. Um, how has the transition to virtual been? I mean, it's a virtual um, uh publication. Yeah, we've made a couple changes just to accommodate the chaos that was 2020. So now we have a uh, regular like posting to our queue so that there's less pressure to um, like have a post ready on a specific day. Um, but otherwise, it seems like the like, general collaboration structure hasn't changed a ton. A lot of people would love to know how you get involved and what that process has been like for you. You both have written now for years. Yeah. You've got so much to do in a PhD. Why, why are you doing this writing thing on top of it? <laughs> Let's go for it. Okay. Um, yeah. So Astrobytes is a blog that is run entirely by graduate students. We write the posts, we uh, edit, we uh, 
deal with the back end of the website. Um, and it's aimed to make astronomy research accessible to undergrads in the physical sciences and the general public. Um, and it's been a really excellent thing to be a part of. Astrobytes has also like, like for me been like a really great thing to be a part of because I'm not sure if I want to do like the traditional research right after my, pre my PhD. And this is giving me like, like sort of building up a portfolio in that sense. Um, to get involved, uh, we have a hiring cycle every year, um, usually around November, December. Um, the application consists of a sample astrobyte and a uh, short personal essay. We also uh, do guest posts often. So if you're interested in writing about a topic, um, reach out to us. For undergrad as well, um, we do guest posts where undergrads can promote their research. But I think it really stuck me, I think a couple of years ago when we wrote a white paper talking about our SciComm approach. Um, uh, for the decadal survey where i think all of us just came together and wrote about like what astrobytes means to us and it's i think the first thing that i remember was it's about like bringing like scientists as humans to do science communication about what people like to talk about right uh, very recently we just got uh, a bunch of new collaborators who have created their own podcast called astro soundbites which is super exciting um we we recently started an instagram channel and and i mean i i just love the way everyone's bringing their best interest to the table and just growing this collaboration in this very fascinating way like i i, I love it i feel like it's gotten to the point where you know like there's a handful of publications like this where you know you publish a paper and then you kind of you kind of hope and wait like Will astrobytes feed, you know, will I get an astrobytes coverage? Is my is did I did I write something that's gonna be kind of fun and at that right audience? You know, not every not every paper is right for that. Not every paper is gonna sp spark that kind of excitement with the right audience, but it, it's it's meant for people to read and it helps show the human story. I so I'm really glad you said that. I think that's really great. Astronomers are people too, which is not something I forget, but just, which is something that I feel like a lot of the astronomy community does forget. That like first and foremost, we are people and then we are scientists. Um, are you writing anything this week? Do you have your eyes on something already? Yeah, I'll be attending a few press conferences. Uh, I'm really excited about the one on stellar evolution, which I, if I remember correctly, you'll be in that one. Yeah, evolving stars or something like that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. All right, guys, I will talk to you again at the wrap-up. Excellent. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thanks. All right, well, I'm learning a lot of technology right now. Um, how to like grab my screen and get the video working and the audio working like uh this is somebody's expertise but it is not my expertise all right i think i think i think that's a wrap-up for the day what do you think buddy dog <gasps> hi oh hi puppy hi puppy the gather town was a smashing success and i'm really excited i think star Toyalist is going to have their own gather town uh, we might have a portal in ours and i think we're going to keep it open and i'm willing to put up a little bit of money to make gather town available to the AAS as a whole so if that's of interest to you, let me know. Um, the link is on the Slack. I'll post it again. Thank you to everybody who showed up, who brought their energy, who contributed. I know some of you couldn't stay the whole day. That's okay. We understand that in 2020 and now 2021, you got to be flexible. So that's a wrap up for the hack day. This is my day zero of AAS. I'll see you on Monday for day one. Plenary talks, posters, exhibitors. Uh, I'm giving a talk in the afternoon. It should be a good time. See you then.